Hello 6303. In this video we're going to talk about a completed theme and what that looks like. The resources used in this video are Student A Sample Paper and the Trait Checklist. Both of those can be found in the Module 3 folder inside Blackboard. I would recommend downloading each of those before we start so that you have a place to take notes as we go through this video. In Student A's paper, you're going to go ahead and skip past the title page, past the introduction, to the very first theme, which is titled Targeting Attributes, Types, and Effects of LGBT Bullying. One thing that I want you to notice right away is that this theme has a heading that is written like a headline. As a reader, I know what to look for in this section, or if I'm skimming, I know where to go for this information. One aspect of APA is that it requires you to be very organized with the information that you deliver to your reader. Whatever order you choose to use is the order you need to stick with in the body of your paper. So for student A, I see three things, targeting attributes, types, and effects of LGBT bullying. I would expect to see each of those three things developed in this theme in that exact order. We're going to pause for a moment and I want you to read all of the first theme of student A's sample paper and it's going to go down um, until you see another headline in bold where it says staff fears conflicts and lack of confidence hinder intervention. Stop and read that on the paper that you have printed off. So after reading the first paragraph, you should realize that the purpose of that paragraph is to introduce the content you're going to be talking about, the content you will develop in this theme. And you'll see that she has the apparent fact that LGBT bullying is still alive and well in our schools is a discouraging reality. In fact, Goldstein et al. bring forth that forms of oppression are mostly influenced and born from institutional and systematic experiences experiences rather than solely individual expressions. To illuminate, the researchers argue that schools are one of the main institutions students learn these ideas from, and schools have a responsibility to shape equitable environments to address the requirements and rights of all students. In order to address and defeat LGBT bullying in schools, educators must first be aware of targeting attributes, types, and effects. So do you see this last sentence here, her concluding sentence for the introduction, that mimics the title of her theme up here. And you can guess the three things that Jill's going to be talking about because she explicitly states it for the reader in the introduction paragraph of the theme. If we look at the information from the trait checklist, we'll see that three of the requirements have already been met. The first is that the theme has a level one heading according to APA 7th edition, and that's centered, bolded, follows capitalization rules. The theme title is written like a headline, and it's going to tell your reader what's going to be covered in the section. And the first paragraph introduces the theme and categories, or sub-themes, that are going to be discussed in the section. So we can tick all of those boxes in the very first paragraph of the first theme. So in the first paragraph, we're looking to see if Jill is connecting the body paragraph to what she said in her introduction and also to what she's kind of set us up to talk about in her paper. As I read the first sentence, I'm looking to see if she's going to talk about target targeting attributes like she set us up for in that introductory paragraph. And she says, researchers have identified several repetitive attributes of youth targeted by LGBT bullying, including sexual orientation, perceived sexual orientation, and gender nonconformity. And she does. She transitions right from, here's what I'm going to talk about in this theme, targeting attributes is the first one. Then she tells us, I'm going to tell you exactly what those targeting attributes are. And if you continue to read this paragraph, you're going to notice that she develops each one of those that she lists in that topic sentence. So she has a topic sentence for this paragraph and she has an order and she sticks with that order the entire way through this paragraph. Another thing that she's doing in this theme is look at these names here. So I've highlighted the different sources that she's used in this single paragraph and you'll notice that she has one, 
two, three, four different sources for a single par paragraph. Student A has done a fantastic job of synthesizing those sources. Rather than just regurgitating what one author has said and just repeating that paper that's already been published, she is cutting up those ideas and putting them together in a new way to present the research in a different way that hasn't been done before. So if we go and we look at our the rest of the bullets in our theme, we'll see that it says each paragraph in this section connects back to the overarching theme. So back to that headline style title that you created for the theme. I'm looking to see that most of the paragraphs are following APA style writing. Just like in sample A where it has a topic sentence, we develop that topic sentence with the supporting sentences and citations, and then it gets wrapped up with a concluding sentence. Just like in sample A, I want to see that all of the information in the section contains citation. Okay. The only places you can kind of get away with not having citations is the introduction and the conclusion. But in the introduction, people often like to make strong statements, and if you're going to do that, you're going to need a citation. You'll also notice that the student did not use very many direct quotes in the section. The majority of the information has been paraphrased. Because if you're doing direct quote after direct quote after direct quote, this is not your work. You are just summarizing, aka plagiarizing, somebody else's work. So you can move those direct quotes in as you're drafting, but then as you continue to revise your themes, you're going to want to transform those into your own writing. And then you'll notice as you continue to read through student A's sample paper that the personal experiences or what you would think is common knowledge for everybody is actually cited by a peer-reviewed source or an expert on the topic. I see a lot of students make this mistake because they think, well, I am an expert. I've been a teacher for, you know, 10, 15 years, or this is my 40th time teaching this class. I know what I'm doing. And that's absolutely true, but that's considered anecdotal evidence. You really want to go back to your sources and pull from what the research says with empirical data. Because if you don't do that, you're just, you, you're just doing a reflection. You're not doing a research paper. So you'll see theme two, you're going to follow the same traits where you have the level one heading, it's centered and bolded, and it follows capitalization. The theme title is written like a headline and it tells the reader, hey, this is what's coming up in the section. The first paragraph, it has a role. Its job is to introduce the theme and the sub-themes that are going to be discussed in that section. Each paragraph has got to connect back to the overall theme. Don't stray off course. Okay, Most of the paragraphs are going to follow APA style writing. We're really aiming for all of them, but I give you a little bit of leniency. All of the sections must have citations. Okay, If you make strong statements in your introduction and conclusion, you better put a citation in there too. Few direct quotes are used. You want to have very few direct quotes total in your paper. You should see maybe one or two in the entire thing. If you have four direct quotes in a paragraph, you're plagiarizing somebody else's work even when you cite it. And remember that personal experiences, we're not relying on anecdotal evidence. We are not writing a reflection. We're looking at peer-reviewed information from empirical sources. So as you begin to draft your themes, keep the, that trait checklist in mind. But really, because it's a draft, it's going to come out super messy. Just know that you're going to have to go back to it and say, hmm, did I do that on the trait checklist? Great, I can move on to the next trait. And just go back and forth between working on it, step away from it. Work on it, step away from it, and check your work against that trait checklist. If you have somebody at home or a peer in the class you want to share your paper with, have them read it and see if they can find the traits in that theme as well. We're really looking to see that you're making sense, um, your ideas are coming through to the reader, and you're following the structure that you set up for the reader. If you need any help on this assignment, 
please let me know. Remember, it is just a draft, so there are going to be some mistakes. That's okay. This may be your first attempt at writing a synthesized theme, so if it's not perfect, that's okay. Okay, but go ahead and turn in what you have to the module three folder inside Blackboard. You're going to submit your draft of themes here and you're going to tell me what you're having trouble with so that I can give you feedback on that area that you're struggling with. Um, and here's some examples listed in here. I'm having trouble paraphrasing the direct quote in XYZ. Could you help me? Um, am I being clear in paragraph two? I kind of feel like I'm just repeating myself. Or I'm having a really hard time with the introduction. How do I set my reader up for what will be discussed? Okay, this is likely very different from papers you have written in the past where um, your professor just says, okay, go write your paper and doesn't give you a lot of direction. I'm giving you a lot of direction on purpose. There's a very, very specific way we want these papers done. It's not something that Dr. Bell and I just made up. It is APA format and we want you to give it a go with these drafts that you are writing for us. Okay, see you next video.